Measuring the absolute number of molecules in a biological sample is a relatively common need. For example, determining the titer of a pathogenic virus or the number of copies of a particular chromosome or gene sequence. But this can pose some unique challenges when using standard real-time PCR. Real-time PCR monitors each cycle in the amplification process to identify the point at which the signal of a reporter die exceeds a predetermined threshold, the so-called cycle threshold or CT. Since real-time PCR amplification depends on a variety of factors, including assay efficiency and instrument calibration metrics, comparison to a reference sample of known concentration is necessary to convert CT measurements for the unknown sample to an absolute concentration. The requirement to have a reference sample raises the following questions. How do I calibrate the reference sample to begin with? What is its stability? Will there be sufficient material to address the needs of all my studies? If I don't have sufficient material, how do I recreate an equivalent? In contrast, digital PCR is not dependent on cycle thresholds. Prior to amplification, the sample is instead partitioned into hundreds to thousands of independent reaction replicates, such that not all reactions receive a copy of the nucleic acid molecule of interest. Following standard PCR amplification, the first step is to classify each reaction according to whether or not amplification has occurred. Reaction wells are shown as either positive or negative. Reducing the data set to positive or negative greatly reduces the assay's dependency on parameters, such as assay efficiency and instrument calibration. From this initial positive-negative determination, an absolute count of the nucleic acid molecules of interest can be calculated. Most importantly, without the need for comparison to any reference standard. And because these absolute values are not dependent on a CT, the data can be compared across different instruments and different labs. Digital PCR for absolute quantification is straightforward. Just keep in mind these three simple considerations. You'll need to determine the degree of precision required around the measurement. This is determined by the total number of reaction replicates run. The greater the replicates, the higher the achievable precision. It is also determined by the ratio of positive reactions to negative reactions. Very low or very high numbers of negative reaction wells prevent you from achieving high precision data. For maximum precision, the percentage of negative reactions should be targeted between 5% and 80%. Next, since digital PCR relies on random distribution of nucleic acid molecules into thousands of reaction replicates, it is possible to have reactions with more than one molecule. That's why digital PCR software needs to apply Poisson statistics to account for the possibility of getting more than one template molecule in one reaction. And finally, as with standard PCR, digital PCR requires DNA as the input molecule. When quantifying RNA, it is customary to first convert the RNA to cDNA. Since poor efficiency conversion will reduce the overall number of detectable cDNA molecules, it is important to optimize the step in the quantification process. So when it comes to absolute quantification, digital PCR is a simple and precise approach for your research.